Hello and welcome to SketchUp Assist. Today we're going to be talking about modeling complex 3D shapes with solid tools. I'll post, paste the link to uh, this help page from SketchUp's documentation in the video description. And in particular, we're going to be we're going to be looking at these six functions that exist uh, within uh, within SketchUp for uh, manipulating uh, geometries as they intersect in particular. Okay, I've, uh, I've already created a, a geometry, or it's, it's actually two geometries here, two groups here, uh, that we will use to perform most of these actions on. And we kind of need this because there are a couple of, um, couple of functions here that without some internal geometry, you don't really see the difference in them. Um, and, and those two are outer shell and union. Um, and so as we take a look at these, we'll kind of highlight uh, the differences in them. And again, you need these internal geometries to understand uh, the difference in those two functions. Uh, with all of the solid tools, and, and note that I have the solid tool palette open here, with all of these, you need two solid objects um, in your, um, in, that you're operating on. Um, and they, they must have you know, fully closed surfaces. Um, and you will know if you don't have a fully closed surface because um, that uh, particular function will not apply. Uh, the other thing is you can't have nested groups within the group. Uh, so if you have a group that has nested groups, uh, you will, will not be able to perform these operations on them. Um, so what we have here are two uh, independent groups. They're basically the same groups, just rotated. Uh, and inserted into one another. They are independent though, not nested groups. And so if I click in this one, it's separate from this one. So uh, just to understand, we are in x-ray mode. Uh, K on the keyboard toggles that and you can see the dotted lines in here indicating the internal uh, sort of hit the hidden geometry. And let's start off with the most simple one, the free uh, function, and that is the outer shell. And we're hovering over it here in the upper left of the tool palette. And the way you perform all of these actions is you select the first group, uh, you select the function, and then you come in and you will notice that as you hover over a valid group, you will see solid group and you'll see the number two. And when we click, click that in this case um, for, again, outer shell, um, basically what's happening here is uh, those, two, um, surf those two groups are merged and we leave only the outer faces of the overlapping solids. And so notice we have gone now from you know two groups to one. And, and I, if I click on this, you will see this has all been merged into a single group. Um, also notice the internal geometries have changed now. And so we no longer have these through lines running. And that is again, because all of that hidden geometry has been removed. Uh, this is a really a, an efficiency play largely, uh, and that is if you have these sort of complex geometries with, with inner geometries, um, even though you may not be able to see those things, SketchUp has to render them and there's computational overhead associated with that. So you could have some scenarios where you have relatively complex geometries that, that become problematic in terms of, um, in terms of you know, manipulating those again from a computational standpoint. And you really only need the outer shells. And so again, if I go out of x-ray mode here, you will see that, um, you know, you can't see that inner geometry. And in fact, in this case, it's been, it's been removed. Um, and by applying the outer shell, you remove that and hence you can make your model more efficient. Now let's undo uh, these changes. So let's go back. So now we have our two independent groups again, and we're going to look at the difference between outer shell and union. So let's uh, once again, select our first group. Let's select outer shell. Let me hover over that temporarily until you can see it pop up and it doesn't look like it's going to, there we go. Uh, union. And now once again, we come down, we'll see that we have a valid second group. Let's click on that. And now notice the difference um, off just sort of quickly. You will see um, that there is now some inner geometry that we didn't have when we applied outer shell. And so this is the uh, common inner geometry. This is the union of the inner geometry. And so not only have we merged the outer surfaces and preserved all of those, but we've also preserved the, the union of the inner geometry here. Once again, we've gone to a single group. And so again, if I click on this, we see that's a single group. And so we've, you know, with the outer shell and the union, you take 
basically two groups and you create one out of those okay all right let's back up uh, undo that and let's look at the um, the third functionality we're going to look at the trim functionality and it it's actually kind of beneficial to go ahead and mention uh, a fourth functionality here and, and we're going to hop around here um, we're going to look at the the trim and the uh, subtract and these are related functions uh, and we will take a quick look here at, at how they're different so let's once again let's select uh, let's select this uh, let's go to the trim functionality and so the trim one solid trims another but it remains in the model and so in this case um, the second group is going to have the overlapping geometry from the first group removed and so let's select it let's select this let's select this okay and now really to see this we should come in here and hide this geometry temporarily and you will see uh, what has happened here so let's let's back up for a moment here let's undo that function let's let's hide this just so you can see for sure what these two geometries again the two groups we have here are identical I've just simply rotated one of them made a copy rotated it and inserted it and so this is geom the geometry so now let's come back and let's apply that one more time and have a look at the impact okay now let's and, and uh, one other thing to note, too, is that we still have two groups, okay? So we still have this group and this group. Let's hide this group. This is the group that was used to trim. This was the first one we selected. And now you can see we have basically carved out from the second group the overlapping geometry uh, that arises from that first group insertion. So um, you can imagine here if you want, you have two objects you want to, insert and you want to have a geometrically accurate sort of receptor for that geometry so to speak um, by inserting it in there and applying the trim function uh, you will carve out from the second geometry the overlapping pieces yet in your model you still preserve the a group that you used as the is the trimming template effectively now let's take a look at the related functionality which is the subtract functionality and see the difference here so let's select our first group again let's come here to the subtract functionality okay now notice these are these are very similar functions uh, with really the only difference between trim and subtract being that in the case of subtract you know, one solid removes part of another and is deleted so that first group is deleted automatically so note that I don't do that after applying it that is part of the function so if I select this one more time if I hit the subtract button and here SketchUp automatically removes that so this could be a case where you just want to carve a shape or remove some portion of geometry from an existing geometry you don't want to keep the the original piece that goes in there you're just simply using it as a template and you want to delete it SketchUp does that for you okay let's get back to our geometry here and we're going to look at one more with this particular setup we have we're going to look at the intersect um, in the case of intersect we leave only the intersecting geometry uh, we could also look at this in a simpler model but let's look at it here and then we'll apply it to a slightly simpler model so let's select our first group once again let's go over here I'll hover for a second so you can see the intersect uh, label pop up let's see. you don't have to do that I'm simply doing it for the for the benefit of this video I'll select on the second one and now I've basically um, removed everything but the intersecting geometries and so if we kind of scroll around here you can see the pieces that remain uh, in that um, let's move over and to a slightly simpler geometry and you can see um, this as well and it makes it maybe a little easier to see and so in this case I have um, once again two groups but this is just a simpler setup I have a, a large group here. I'll double click on it you can see that uh, and then I have um, a smaller group and I have simply you know uh, overlapped these in in space so they're not nested they're still two independent groups but just overlapping in space 
Uh, once again, I can select my first group and I'm going to reapply the intersect here again so you can see a little bit about what's happening. And so notice what is happening is we're keeping just simply that overlapping piece. So what you're not really able to see is we're trimming off this, the top of this group and then we're basically trimming everything else of this group around that section. So once again, if I select this, come here, you'll see that I'm simply keeping uh, the intersecting geometry. It's a little easier to visualize in this simpler example, I believe. Okay. Uh, the last one we're going to look at is the split. And, and this splits solids along intersecting geometry. And this one is quite interesting and quite distinct um, in that um, it leaves us with three groups. So in, in the previous uh, functions we've looked at, we've, we've typically, you know, had two groups remaining or we've gone down to one. In the case of the split function, we actually end up with three groups. So let's select our first group. And again, just to clarify what's happening here, um, if we hide that, you can see that this is simply a um, three-dimensional sort of cube. Um, and if I select this, I come in here, select my split functionality, and select this. Now, um, it's not immediately evident what has happened here, but if we come in, um, I still have my group here. And, but what you're going to see is that in this particular example, I now have this group, and you can really see it if I come in here and slide it back. So what we've done here is, or what the function, I should say, has done is it has trimmed off the top of my original group, created a new group out of it. I still have my original group, and now I have a new third group. And so we have now broken this geometry, which is two geometries into, into three independent pieces. And that is the split function. So again, these are very high level um, examples of how these uh, functions work, uh, how you apply them. Um, the way you really learn these is in getting some practical examples and applying them. And we'll take a look at some of those in later videos. Uh, so for now, uh, that's all. Good luck.